Welcome to Inside Auto Podcast, where we feature everyone and anyone you'd want to talk to in and out of the automotive industry. Ilana Shabtai here, host of Inside Auto Podcast, where we interview top dealers, GMs, marketers, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders in and out of the automotive industry. And before we introduce today's guests, this episode is sponsored by AutoLeadStar.com. AutoLeadStar is pioneering marketing automation in the automotive industry with sophisticated machine learning that future-proofs a dealership's marketing operations and replaces traditional marketing methods. All right, we're going to do things a little differently today. I have two very special guests who are coming together to review the Ford Bronco Sport today. Uh, their expertise and backgrounds are a bit different, so they're going to be coming with different perspectives on this vehicle. Uh, introducing first Jack Nirod, who has been on the podcast before. Hello, Jack. Welcome back. Hey, great to be with you. Thanks How so much for having me again. Been? Good. Things are terrific. Awesome. Always Jack, good to talk to you. What'd you say? I say always good to talk to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. We're honored to have you back. Um, Jack has spent decades in the automotive industry as a journalist, author, and communicator. Past positions held by Mirad include editor at Motor Trend Magazine, editor at Automotive Age, and director of publications at J.D. Power and Associates. You can check out some of Jack's work on his podcast, America on the Road, and you can check out his new book, The GR Factor, which we spoke about on our previous podcast. Um, along with Jack, we have Stephen Gabara, General Manager of Shop Ford in Detroit. Stephen, thanks for joining us. Hey, very excited to be here, and I'm going to go ahead and correct you. It's Zot Ford. Zot Not Ford. Shot. I apologize. Yeah. Zot Ford. Whoa. You, you right. We all say Shop Ford, so I need to make sure auto. I know. Out of our I know. Zot I've given Ford. Aaron a hard time about it also. Of course. Yes. We got to change that. Zot Ford. Thank you for the correction. Um, he has actually a background in electrical engineering, but Stephen stumbled into the automotive industry by accident. Uh, starting in 1992, he's been helping people successfully navigate the second largest purchase most of them will ever make. And now as a manager, his priorities have shifted. He focuses on elevating the reputation of the car salesman, empowering women within the industry, which obviously I loved that one, and recruiting and mentoring talented newcomers. So thank you both yeah, for joining. Absolutely. Impressive lineup we have here today. Excited to be here. Yeah, so good to be with you. And good to meet Steven. Yeah, so let's Great shake things up. Jack. Let's shake things up. Um, I told you this before we started. I am fully, fully honest here that I am not a car person. I'm relying on both of you to bring the juice to this episode. Um, I've seen a lot of news and hype about the Ford Bronco Sport, so I'm excited to learn about it myself as well uh, and bring some information to our listeners. Let's just start with, um, I know, Jack, you recently, you recently tested it. Tell us, tell us what the experience was like. Uh, the experience was terrific. Um, I think Ford has such a big opportunity with Bronco and Bronco Sport. I mean, there, Ford has, I would describe it as a lot of oil under the ground here uh, with the way people feel about the Bronco name and the Bronco, what Bronco can be to them. Uh, Jeep has kind of had this market all to itself for a long, long time. And uh, Ford has done essentially nothing with this for a long, long time. But all of a sudden, here they come with uh, several vehicles, and there's just so much to like. And there's so much to like about this individual vehicle, the Ford Bronco Sport, as well. Um, and I also, Ford mentioned this is the roomiest crossover in its class. Is that, does that hold true? Did you feel like you had a nice amount of space? Well, I, you know, I, I suppose I did. I, it depends on how you uh, define the class, and I don't think room is uh, what... Uh, this buyer really cares about so much. I think it's more about capability. Uh, and this is a very, very capable vehicle. I think a lot of us uh, who test vehicles were a little, um, had a little bit of trepidation going in, wondering if the Bronco Sport would really be a, a capable off-roader. And after driving an off-road for the better part of a day, I can say with uh, no hesitation, it really is. Uh, there's a lot to like about both versions of the Bronco Sport, it's extremely capable. I think it has plenty of room inside for the stuff people want to take with them when they're doing what they're doing. But right. um, I, I was really impressed with the vehicle. I think it's, it's a very, very good vehicle. And I think it's going to be a home run. 
That's awesome. And so Steven, who runs a Ford store, um, have you had the chance to, to actually test it out? I have. Um, I had the fortune of seeing prototypes um, going back about two years ago. Oh, wow. And um, it was really exciting to see them. Um, you know, at that time they took our phones and locked them up. We, you know, so they made sure nothing leaked out. And then um, where a lot of the press has driven these vehicles is at a location literally just a few miles from here, an off-road park, um, where they've brought in a lot of national, international press to experience these. So if you've seen this Hollywood-like Bronco sign up on the side of a mountain, that's actually right near the dealership here. So we've had an opportunity to check them out. And the one thing that um, I really enjoy about the sport is what Jack touched on, which is, you know, I think a lot of people that drive this will not have any interest in taking it off-road. It's more about the feeling that they can if they want to. Um, but it's very capable, which I don't want to say I didn't expect because that's what Ford had been telling us all along, but it's more, it's, it's better than we anticipated. Hmm. And, and Jack touched on this, that Jeep kind of owned this class of car before F Ford came with this. So how do you feel as a dealer that's going to be able to, to compete at a whole new level? Um, and is the Jeep Wrangler <laughs> your, your, the, the Ford Bronco Sports main competitor at this point? Or will it be? Yeah. Uh, so you're 100% accurate. Jack's statement's 100% accurate, which is Jeep has owned this for a long time. Um, our our automotive group, we have a, a Jeep dealership as well. So we're quite familiar with what Jeep's market share is like. Uh, as long as, and also what the customers that drive Jeep are looking for and the level of dedication and, um, you know, ultimate brand loyalty that they have. So with Ford coming in here, it's really interesting because I think one thing that we're going to see is that, yes, it's going to be a direct competitor to Jeep, but it might not necessarily be the Jeep customer that's been a Jeep person for 20 or 30 years, but it's really going to appeal to the younger generation because as where Jeep has ultimately been similar for a long time, Ford's coming in the realm with the capabilities of Jeep as well as technology that really hasn't been introduced into this class. Um, so it's going to be really cool. I mean, things that people do with Jeeps with putting um, cameras and all kinds of different accessories on their dashboard. You know, Ford's got a rail there. They're going to sell a, uh, a system that you can buy aftermarket to attach all kinds of things, whether it be your phone, dash cams, um, navigation systems. I mean, it's, there's so many things inside and out where I think this Bronco Sport is going to just appeal to a Jeep mentality, but certainly a uh, different customer. Hmm. And you don't think you're going to be able to get the, the, the very loyal 50-year Jeep customers with that? With the Bronco Sport, I would say definitely not. Um, with the full-size two-door and four-door that's coming down the road, there's more of a chance because the Bronco Sport isn't going to go directly against the Wrangler, which is what most people consider the consummate Jeep. So I think when, the, when we get the full-size in the spring – you'll see it. But the, the, you know, the hardest core loyalists, they're not going to leave Jeep. They're certainly not. Will they come and drive these? Yes. Just so that they can tell their friends why it's not as good as a Jeep, right? They'll find something about it. Um, but there's going to be things that Ford's going to specialize in that they know is going to be better than Jeep. And there's going to be things that they let the Jeep have just because they're not necessarily worth chasing. And Jack, tell us about um, the power of the the, the brand of Bronco and how that, did that influence it coming back into the market? Because like we talked about, there's so much hype around this, the Ford Bronco. It's almost like it's come back, I think, I think since 1920, right? Or something, I, know, I mean, I think it's been over 80, I think it's been about a hundred years. So- No, it's not a hundred years. It, it's, no. it's more like 60 years or something like years. that. It is in the 60s. Okay. Uh, but exactly. there is a lot of um, enthusiasm for Bronco. The, okay. the classic Bronco of the 60s is one of the most collectible vehicles right now. People love it. And I'll tell you, people of all ages love it. My 25-year-old daughter thinks, uh, you know, it's the, the classic Bronco is the coolest thing out there. Uh, wow. And she is not a car person at all. I mean, very, very far from that. Um, so there's, a, a, like I say, a, a Ford had a lot of oil under the ground, a, a lot of oil they could pump out with Bron the Bronco name. And I think... They're doing it in a really interesting way. They're, they're creating not just a vehicle, but a brand, uh, a sub-brand to Ford. And I think that's a really smart way to go about this. And, um, you know, as Stephen said, the, the Bronco Sport is not head-to-head -head with Wrangler. I think it's, it's more head-to-head -head with 
uh, Jeep Cherokee and uh, Jeep Compass, uh, kind of in between those two, actually, uh, um, with uh, the capability, at least the equal capabilities of, of those vehicles. And those are the vehicles that people drive and they um, use for, for two uses all the time. They're commuting in them, uh, as uh, has been said, uh, a lot of people just profile in them. They're really not off-roading so much. But the interesting thing about the Bronco Sport is it'll go off-road. It'll go off-road quite well and has uh, really pretty, pretty darn good capabilities to do that. Um, so that's great. I think that, that Ford using the, the brand and the name to kind of market the, the Bronco Sport, um, besides the fact that it sounds like an amazing car, I think actually using the power of the brand will help uh, with its market, with gaining market share. Um, have you started any marketing when it comes to the Bronco Sport at Dot Ford? And if so, what's that looking like? And who do you think the target market will really be? I know you mentioned that maybe it would be a newer generation, but um, let's get into that a bit more, Stephen. Yeah, for sure. So a little bit to Jack's point, when you talk about just the brand itself, I, I started selling Fords in 1999. And from that day forward, the Bronco name has been brought up in the showroom weekly. There has been customers that will say, hey, what about the Bronco? And, you know, is there going to be another Bronco? And I love my Bronco. And wow. in the very early 2000s, um, you know, Ford had expeditions and you know, they were like, hey, here's a, a large SUV that's going to fit the mode of the Bronco. And that was true if you're looking at Broncos that were really relevant, um, you know, in the 90s. But when you started to look at things like the original Bronco that was from the 60s, it was really designed to be an off-road vehicle. And it was smaller and it was, it was a little bit more compact. Ford didn't have anything that fit the bill. And that's where Jeep really kind of took and ran with it. And so I really love the term when you said there's oil under the ground because there is. This is this could be as big as Ford ever wanted it to be. They could take this. The fact that when we finally heard that they were coming with a Bronco family, it wasn't just a Bronco. Right then and there, um, as a dealer, we knew it was going to be different. We knew that they were going to take a course that they hadn't taken in the past. And uh, first, I didn't understand it, but as it started to develop, it was pretty genius when you've got the Sport, which is an entry-level model that we're here to talk about today, and then the next two models that are the full size with a two-door and a four-door, you're going to really touch uh, virtually everybody in the market that could want to have any, you know, any availability to an off-road vehicle. They're going to bring it with these three, and we're hearing that there may be more coming, not in the, not, you know, certainly in the near future, but in the not-too-distant future. So, it's exciting. And when you look at the marketing, the marketing plays a big role in that. We have, um, there's so much out there about it. I mean, just, you know, for any internet nerds that pay attention to how you market on the internet with search engine optimization and search engine marketing, we have to be very cautious about what terms we're spending money on because there's so much activity around the word Bronco on the internet that uh, you could blow a, a marketing budget very quickly right. if you're not careful on how you restrict it. About that as because, well. yeah, because there's just, there's so many people out looking for it. So we've let people know that it's going to be available. But the thing that's really exciting, Alana, to us as a dealership is that the Bronco sports are going to be very available starting day number one. So you've been able to go online and reserve a Bronco for a few months now, um, both the large and the sport or the full size Bronco and the sport. But the one thing with the Sport is that Ford intends to sell a lot of these. The volume of uh, Bronco Sport is going to be similar to the volume of Ford Escape, which is one of the top selling SUVs in America. So the fact that Ford's ready to come to market and at that volume uh, is really exciting to us because we know we're going to be able to help our customers get these things. Uh, and that's a big deal because there's nothing worse than hype when you can't deliver product. And Ford is ready to do that with the Bronco Sport. Yeah, and I think that's incredible, especially considering the latest inventory challenges. I think people are ready to just get their hands in the car that they want. And I think dealers are ready to have their lots full. Um, so I think that that's an important point to make. And talking about inventory, Jack, I'm interested, how, how hard or how easy is it to get your hands on 1960 Broncos? On 1960 Broncos? Uh, it depends on how much money you want to bring to the table. I <laughs> yes. <laughs> they're readily available if you want to 
uh, pay top dollar. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, oh, and okay. then they're and they're all individual these days. I mean, a Bronco that has lasted from the 60s has been uh, probably rebuilt two or three times uh, in its uh, owner's uh, idea of what, what would be the perfect Bronco. So uh, they're all one-offs at this point. And uh, true that, I think that's what's going to be interesting about this is uh, we're going to come, come to market, as, as Stephen said, with a lot of vehicles. You're going to see a lot of Bronco nameplates out there. People are going to recognize this profile pretty quickly in the the branding of it, and uh, I, I really think it's going to take off. And what's what's the pricing going to be like? Do we have access to that information yet? I'm sure we do. Yeah, we do. Um, you know, the entry model is going to start in the um, the high twenty thousand dollar mark, so you can get into a Bronco for under thirty thousand dollars, a Bronco Sport, let me be specific, for under thirty thousand um, dollars. And the one thing that Ford has really paid very close attention to and they've certainly studied Jeep and Jeep buyers is the amount of accessorizing people like to do to their SUVs, especially with the, the you know, the off-road capability. So not only is Ford going to offer some packaging that you've never really seen before in the industry, which are truly set up for off-roading with whether it be suspension, um, you know, guide rails and protection beneath the vehicle to wheels and tires, but you're also going to see some pretty exciting things with, dealer offered accessories which right now ford's talking about coming with a catalog of 200 to 400 aftermarket accessories that are ford branded and one thing that does for the user or the owner is that they've got this vehicle that they can accessorize through the dealership and carry a warranty so it's not going to avoid the warranty of the vehicle but the the accessory itself will follow the same three-year 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty that uh, the vehicle has so they've really touched on a lot of sweet spots here that um you know i'm not going to say jeep has done a poor job as because jeep is fantastic at what they do but there's been there's windows of opportunity and ford i think really intends to exploit them so a lot of aftermarket active uh opportunity for for bronco uh sport is that something that is um kind of like a, a new angle for ford and that they're bringing a lot of new accessories to this car or is that something that's common and i'm asking this again because i i am the, I, I joked last podcast that I need to actually buy Jack's car, Jack's uh, book, The Idiot's Guide for Buying or Leasing a Car. That that was probably written for me. But is that is well that well done, Jack? Is that a new strategy? Thanks for the plug. I appreciate it. Yes, and it's definitely it's definitely something that I think me and um, most of my friends, unfortunately, should should read. But um, is that a new strategy for Ford? Uh, it's a great question. So the answer is yes and no. Historically, the answer to that would be. Ford has not been in the accessory game much more than any other manufacturer. But okay. when they brought the Ranger back a couple years ago, um, that was really, that vehicle, they really targeted it at outdoor enthusiasts, people who canoe, people who um, find themselves off-road. It's not necessarily an off-road vehicle, but it's off-road capable. If you want to go out into the woods and camp, if you want to get yourself deep back into the woods and, and, and find yourself on a river that's not easily accessible. The vehicle is capable of that. Now it's not out climbing rocks and things that uh, Bronco and Jeep are gonna do, but they realized then that they needed to accessorize. So you can turn, they've got some really great things for um, canoes and bus that you can buy aftermarket accessories from, you can turn your Ranger ultimately into a small campground with tents and generators. So Ford really got serious about accessories with the Ranger and they're taking what they've learned and they're going to continue to move that to Bronco and do it better and bigger. Well, and that's a big profit opportunity, isn't it? I mean, in a couple of ways. One is uh, they can finance this stuff as they're buying the vehicle. So that's great. The other thing is when they, that'll keep them coming back to the dealership to buy more stuff <laughs> over time uh, as stuff becomes available. So, uh, and always that exposure has got to be good for you, right? Yeah, no question, Jack. You know what's interesting about that? And I'm going to get these numbers a little bit wrong because they changed and they're very fluid. But Ford did a study some years back. We, you know, obviously, we're fortunate to have the F-150, which the Ford F-150 is the number one selling vehicle in America. That blows a lot of people away. Not the number one selling truck, but the number one selling vehicle in America. And Ford did a lot of studies on the accessories on that vehicle. So when someone comes in and buys a Ford F-150, what do they do to it? Well, the average customer spends over $1,000 in accessories. And to like any manufacturer, right, Ford got dollar signs in their eyes and said, oh, my goodness, we're leaving money on the table. 
And from that, they've started pushing more and more into this accessory game. And to your point, Jack, yeah, it's a great reason to keep coming back to the dealership. But what I've liked is they've, they've been smart about this because now with Ford accessories, they interact so well with the vehicle. They're made for it, right? So it's not a major modification you have to do to bring any dealer installed accessory to a Bronco or a Ranger for that matter. Um, the warranty is a big thing in my opinion. I've experienced with is a boots on the ground dealer guy. How many times someone will accessorize a vehicle and something about that accessory will void part of a manufacturer's warranty, right? So now you've got an accessory that goes bad and that accessory going bad now forced something to break on your vehicle. Now you're in, you know, you're really in a problem because you've got to fix your vehicle and then you've got to redo the accessory. So with these Ford aftermarket accessories, they're fully warranted for the, you know, the same, they run parallel with the warranty on the vehicle. So yes, it's a profit center, but two, I just think it, it really enhances the ownership experience um, because it makes it simpler to do. To Jack's point, you can finance it with the vehicle. And ultimately, when you're out driving that car, you forget how easy it was to buy it or how easy it was to get the accessory. But what you recognize is the ownership experience. And when things are carefree and problem-free, guess what? Chances are they can, they're going to come back and buy another Ford. Yeah, totally. Maybe, Jack, t- tell us about the the... I know you recently drove it. So the best uh, thing about driving it, how you were feeling, um, what your suggestions would be for an in-market Ford Bronco sport buyer. Well, I think the best thing about it is it's an authentic off-roader. It really has those capabilities. So you're not just profiling in this thing. You're not just ha- uh, driving something with a nameplate on it that looks cool, but it really isn't all that it, it seems to be. Uh, in, in both forms. It's two basic power plants and they're both really capable. Uh, obviously the more powerful of the engines, uh, the vehicle with that engine is, is more capable. It also has more stuff on it that helps it be capable. But it, it's just a, a, a real authentic off-road vehicle. Uh, if you care about that kind of lifestyle, uh, if you care about getting to places uh, that you can only access off-road, um, it's the perfect vehicle for you. And affordable, which I I learned in this episode, which I'm very excited about. Absolutely true. I agree. Awesome. Steven, anything else you want to tell our listeners before we sign off? Uh, No, just that, you know, I know that the the customers are super excited about Bronco being back and we're incredibly excited. And the thing that that I'm happiest about is that they're going to be available. They're going to, the production numbers of these vehicles are going to be so be, they're going to be at a level where people can get a hold of them. Um, you know, we're going to start to have Broncos come in here any day now. And when they do, we've got people excited to, that they can come see them, drive them. Um, you know, Ford has a program with their dealers. It's called Ford uh, Courtesy Transportation. And that allows us to put new vehicles into a service. So when people bring their cars in for work, we put them in brand new cars and they're comfortable and so on and so forth. Well, what they're doing with all their dealer, their dealers nationwide is we are going to be bringing in um, these Broncos, the first couple come in, they're going to go into this four seat transportation, which means customers can come in here and go on three and four day test drives and no charge to them with this new Bronco sport. So they'll be able to come in, take this, drive it where they drive, park it where they park, put it in their garages, put their family in it, try their gear out and just really experience this, this vehicle to the fullest. And I think that's exciting because that's something that hasn't been done in the industry to my knowledge and it's going to be a game changer just for more exposure for this thing. So Ford's done everything right, in my opinion. Yes, I have a biased opinion, but I've also been heavy critics of them in the past with other launches. And I just, I think they've got uh, all their I's dotted and T's crossed with the Ford Bronco. So we're excited. That's awesome. And extremely refreshing that it's going to be available, especially after the year we've had. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today, Stephen and Jack. It was Fun to shake things up with you on this episode um, and learn a lot about the Ford Bronco Sport. I hope our listeners enjoyed it. And if you did, please, please tune in and subscribe Inside Auto Podcast. We will catch you next time. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Inside Auto Podcast. Check out our other episodes with top entrepreneurs and industry leaders.